Hi all, let's have a look at Leela Zero in the TCEC season 13. So this is this is a chance for Leela to shine against 43 core opponents. The first round Leela was facing Rodent Free. Let's have a look at this game. So 43 core Rodent Free pushing pushing brute force to the limits. Uh, so Leela with two 1080 graphics cards I believe I'll put the details in the pinned comments of this video just in case there's things to add or change just check there for the technical specs and the time limits and everything okay so d4 uh, knight f6 from rodent we have knight f3 e6 now this is the book given to both engines and it ends here I believe so leader plays c4 d5 so we have uh, what seems to be an exchange. Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop d6, Bishop g5, c6, Queen c2, Black Castles, e3, h6. And here uh, we have Bishop h4. It seems uh, leaders aiming to exchange off the dark square bishops to soften black on the dark squares. That seems pretty logical. There's also a nice pressure on this diagonal. In fact, here uh, in chess based live book it seems castles has been seen before in this position and for example here this is thought to be even white well, might be trying for a minority attack later but in this game we have um, bishop h7 check disrupting the king's position and the bishop just goes back now rodent doesn't care it seems about the king being on h8 and g8 it doesn't put the king back on g8 instead rook c8 white castles queen c7 rook a c1 Bishop g4, Bishop g3. So Lila doesn't mind about the pawns being doubled here, just wants to exchange off the dark square bishops. And here there might be a concern about knight b5 as an invisible threat uh, for queen takes c7 later. I just, just put that on the board. Knight b5 might be a concern here. This position. Because the bishop's now I C seven. So anyway, black took on uh G three H G. So double pawns, but uh, black slightly vulnerable on the dark squares in theory. Now this Queen B three is a bit of a probing move, hitting B seven, but now Queen A three, looking at those dark squares, A five, and after A five, interestingly. Lena plays Queen B3, so offering double pawns over here. So there's been an offer of double pawns here twice, in fact, if, if Black wants to take on F3. F that just helps quite though. But here, uh, this is very tempting to Rodent, and Rodent does take. So it looks as though Rodent's evaluation likes this uh, position <clears throat> for this structure. The, the question is, is A5 uh, more of a target now with this A file? Rook A8, Rook A1, Rook FC8. Now, an interesting move, knight e1, g6, f3 kicking the bishop back, g4. So black's minor pieces are being kept at bay here. Now knight c2. Now here, black commits to playing c5, maybe concerned about b4 in this position. As a fact, just put this on the wall, b4 is supported by knight c2. And that would dissolve uh, white's double pawns. And so to have the cake and eat it, some extra pressure with with better pieces potentially. So black does a lockdown, but at the expense of the b5 square. Now also there's a possibility of the d5 pawn becoming an isolated queen's pawn now. Lila is actually tapping though first into that b5 square with bishop b5. We have b6. So black's actually moving a lot of pawns all over the place here. On c takes d4. This would be a very nice position for white. This nice blockade position against the isolated queen's pawn. Um, probably that's the strongest move, I believe. For example, here, knight a4. This position, white could get a nice edge with rook c3 here to challenge that c file in style and look at white's pieces. They're a bit better. So that could be better for white. But uh, we see b6, rook fd1. Knight f8, and then the king comes to the center a bit, rook d8. 
Bishop e2, rook a b8. Now knight a3, so exch exchanging the blockader. We've seen this in one or two game examples before. The ideal blockader here would seem to be a knight. So, but there's now after bishop c8 another structural change which seems a little bit scary to play d takes because it does activate black on the b file against double pawns so is this a really scary decision well the blockade affords this knight a b5 for the moment and hitting a5 but is this some sort of dynamic gambit from rodent knight e6 so rook takes a5 so gambiting the a pawn Technically, gamuts are at the start of the game. So, pawn sacrifice for initiative here. Some initiative. Is it scary? Well, this is unusual because I don't usually show you these types of Lila games. Lila actually has to try and consolidate against fierce peace pressure against the 40, 43 core opponent. How to do this here? Well, we start to see some quirky moves. Knight a2, bishop e8, rook d2, bishop d7. So for the moment, now knight c1, for the moment, black doesn't seem to have a, a quickly uh, punish, a quick punishment for white. And white is able to, by protecting b3 now, <laughs> with this seemingly very passive maneuver, is able to move this knight now without losing b3. So here we have bishop c6. Now slight improvement of the piece. Bishop d3, the bishop can tuck in on c2 to maybe relieve the knight. Exchange of defender, upgrading the defender of b3. Rook a8, that exchange of rooks here, bishop c2, so there's adequate defense of b3 and a2 here. Rook b8. Bishop d1, is that a slight improvement as well? Defending b3 from d1. Bishop b7. Knight d3, and all of a sudden here, white's questioning black's pawns now, the c5 one, might be under scrutiny. Not yet though, knight e1, d5 under scrutiny. Knight d3, again c5 under scrutiny, with knight a4 with the possibility. Uh, but, nope, we don't see that. We see knight c1, bishop c2, a bit of maneuvering here going on. And here... Uh, we see rook d3, some maneuvering. Knight a2, as though maybe b4 is on the cards. Rook a8, hitting the knight. That's protected. So again, maybe b4 is on the cards, and that's stopped. Rook d2, now knight c3, hitting d5. Knight d3. Knight e5 is played here. On uh, Knight a4 might have been plausible in this position. This position might have been plausible. White well, seems to be okay there with a nice edge. Uh, so already it's, it is nice what's happening. It's in White's favour, whatever's happening here. Uh, but, yep, some toing and froing. Uh, so, rook b4, knight a2, knight c3, yep, some manoeuvring, knight d3, knight a4, knight c3. <laughs> bishop d1 okay so bishop d1 here if rook c6 by the way there's it seems to be b4 white black's always got to be on the lookout for this undoubling the pawns with advantage this would be a real pass pawn this scenario so that would be in white's favor so we see uh bishop c sorry we see bishop c6 keeping an eye on b4 as a break but knight a4 now we do have a structural transition because uh, yeah, c5 is is targeted now, as well as the rook. That's actually taken undoubling white's pawn. So there is some evidence now that maybe white's making a little bit of progress uh, against a supercharged rodent on 43 cores. So c4, knight f4, hitting d5, rook b4, knight e2, knight c5, and we see knight c3. Rook b7, king f1, knight d3, it looks aggressive, but um, there is b3 here now possible. Before we just check out rook d7 here at move 70, instead, king e2, I've discovered something here that white can potentially 
this is just the variation white can potentially in this line sacrifice the exchange you can see the two connected pass pawns potential and also d5 might be vulnerable later for example this is an example continuation where d5 could be proven to be uh, vulnerable while it start to have a big advantage so it is it is getting a bit precarious but knight d3 here this is the exchange sack here but b3 rook b8 yeah black can't take that clearly uh <laughs> we're just going to stop that pawn with two pieces up so b3 rook b8 b tanks bishop c2 now white's starting to be clearly in the driving seat now after king e2 we have king f8 uh if knight takes here <clears throat> doesn't really help black this position white's in control of the b6 square and that is a fantastic knight on d5 all of a sudden this position is very very nice with white picking up even c4 so black's really on the back foot now more clearly and some still improving the position a bit king d2 knight b d5 knight e2 check rook h8 going over to h6 going after that knight cd5 knight c3 some simplification so it's a bit clearer now e4 yep this is getting to be very nice g5 uh, now f4 take depriving the e5 square for the knight king d4 uh yeah you might also ask like taking now that wasn't indulged uh it is taking a time king d6 and now actually a, a stabilizing move g3 stabilizing f4 in advance creating a bit more independence in the position from for adventure uh as an example if rook h7 if the adventure starts off straight away it might backfire a bit knight f8 actually hits the rook and protects f7 for example here uh knight e6 check and yeah that's that's troublesome yeah like for f4 dropping um or things like knight c5 check perhaps if uh, if over here knight c5 and taking that so it's a good stabilizing move for the, for the variations uh which might happen king e7 king takes now now taking the pawn under safe conditions so two pawns up it should be uh good for white now check knight e6 these aren't this is a grind there's no make no mistake this is not a game I pick for YouTube entertainment value, but this is of historical importance because it's a first major test in TCEC against with leader with decent you know graphics cards. So that's why I'm showing you this game. But it is a grind game. Bishop b3, knight g2, rook h8, check, knight f4, bishop c4, whites with the outside pawn here, uh, which is dangerous, and black adopts the tarish rule getting behind the pass pawn but it's tying down a whole rook now now this releases the h5 lever but that's made more effective first once the knight moves h5 and g6 will be on the cards check rook b8 e5 here rook a8 king a4 king b4 now finally the knight goes back the bishop dominates the position of bishop d5 look at that knight being dominated here beautiful glorious special on d5 at move 105 now here the game actually ended after knight c6 because both sides evaluation shot over a certain threshold and they do adjudicate as, as a win if the game continued and there's evidence you can see uh, the evaluations of both sides and what they're seeing as well on the tset live it's, it's fascinating that you can see all sorts of things on tset live it was a bit too late for me to cover this game live, by the way. Um, the, you know, it was after 10 p.m. But anyway, here, Black did basically resign. And this reflects, historically, uh, Leader's first win under TSAC conditions against Mammoth 43 core rodent-free opponents. So congratulations to the Leela team, everyone involved in the Leela project. It's starting to be real evidence to any cynics on TSEC. Maybe last year they were a bit cynical because Leela was ID one two five at the time on a on a normal processor and didn't do very well. Didn't win a single game. So already round one, 
lead has already won the first game. It could have continued. Bishop takes, and then eight, uh, King b5, and now h5 is is a key breakthrough move. For example, here g6. This is just overloading the black position with two connect two not not connected two two passports on both sides of the board. This would just be winning trivially. Yeah, queening, for example. Hmm. The next game is a bit shorter, I'm going to show you soon, but historic win there. Congratulations to everyone involved. It's been a really superb project, uh, and I've absolutely loved every single game I've covered of Leela. And this is an important historical one. I hope you got something from it. Uh, <laughs> Leela, under unusual circumstances here, uh, under a lot of pressure to try and consolidate the position, but managed to uh, eventually undouble the pawns, basically, and... Uh, create uh, real pressure as a solid pawn up and then later uh, winning another pawn c4 pawn dropping it started to be technique after that okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much